Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I have three red Bordeaux in front of me. Uh, one of them is a 2009, but the first two are 2010. I'll be interested to find out what they're like because uh, I'm doing an article for a magazine and the brief was mature but affordable Bordeaux. Now, is 2010 mature? Only one way to find out. Let's dig in. First one uh, is Chateau de Fontbelle, uh, Saint Emilion Grand Cru, 2010. Uh, so let's give this one a whirl. Well, it smells youthful and plummy, and uh, it's got that uh, slightly crunchy blackcurrant blackberry uh, that um, where the, the fruit's gone that just that little bit overripe, uh, but not so overripe that it's gone in gone jammy. Um, it smells like it's going to be quite full and fleshy. I think it's a 14% alcohol. Yeah, 14% alcohol, which um, uh, is now the norm for some parts of Bordeaux in in good vintages. Mm, lovely, juicy, rich, full, plush, plummy style. Um, it's um, uh, it, it, it's quite a full fleshy wine, uh, but it, it's um, where the fruit is just tin, it's just hinting at the overripe, but um, uh, it's still coming through with plumminess and um, uh, and ripe blackberries rather than really really overripe blackberries. Um, and then, uh, then the, the more of the soily elements come in. So there's like a briny character, a touch of graphite, and um, uh, but it's it's just this juicy generosity that's uh, that's the main event and uh, keeps me coming back for another sip. Nice wine. Not sure about it being mature. I think there's um, quite a bit of life still ahead of that. Let's see uh, whether number two is uh, mature. Uh, this is uh, 2010 again. Chateau Mocaillou uh, from Mouly. Um, let's give this one a whirl. So the first wine, uh, the, the, the Saint Emilion, was uh, predominantly Merlot. This one here, um, well, just about predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon, 52% Cabernet, 40, 41 Merlot, and Petit Verdot, uh, making it all add up to 100. Uh, and I stick my nose in there, and it's, it's a much more of that, uh, that blackcurrant cassis uh, character. Uh, it's still quite a full fleshy wine, 13.5%. So you're getting this ripeness, and there is a touch of the plum and the blackberry. But whereas before, uh, the plum and the blackberry were to the fore, and the black currant, what there was, was in the background. Here it's the opposite way around. Um, feels like it's got more of a, uh, a savoury element as well to it. Um, and uh, so it smells, it smells good. Uh, it smells younger than the, the, the first one, though, and that's the way Cabernet ages uh, slower than Merlot. Which, so it's what you expect. And there's a general richness and juiciness, and just when you think it's going to be too rich, that's when a combination of a couple of things. Mouly is, uh, uh, it's, people, some people sort of think of Mouly as being like a slightly rustic end of, um, uh, of the wines of the Medoc. And uh, it's a bit unfair. I think that it, without some of the sexier names, the Poyacs, saint Julians, and Margots, uh, it would shine out. But... Um, it's maybe not quite as refined as they are, but it's still very satisfying wine. Um, so there's this earthy grip to it, and then there's this fruit, and then there are other elements. There's like a, uh, almost like a saline character. I was talking a bit about a little touch of brininess on the previous one. Um, Mouly has this, yes, it's got, the, it's got that, uh, that firmness to it and chunkiness, uh, but then there's also the, the factor of 2010. Uh, 2010 and 2009, really two, two fascinating back-to-back -back vintages. 2009 is probably a bit plusher and friendlier. 2010 is a bit st sterner and more structured, which is better yeah, who cares? They're both pretty nice, and this is pretty nice wine. As for it being mature, well, I I probably would set in and have a few glasses of that now, but um, that backbone um, and uh, that, that fresher fruit element, uh, fresher than the, uh, uh, the, I mean, the Fonbel, sorry, not the Fonbel, uh, yeah, Chateau de Fonbel, um, uh, that was more developed, more forward. Here, it feels like there is, it, it's got much more potential for the future. Uh, both good. I think I prefer the Mokayu, but uh, both pretty classy wines. Let's see where we get a classy wine from, uh, final wine. Uh, so this is um, the second wine of Chateau Belgrave uh, in Eau Medoc. Uh, so D Diane de Belgrave, 2009 vintage. Give it a whirl. So I think the regular Belgrave is probably more Cabernet Sauvignon than uh, uh, the Merlot, but on this one, it's second wine, it's, it's roughly 50-50, uh, but there's bits of Petit Verdot and, uh, and Cabernet Franc in there as well. Um, uh, and I stick my nose in, and um, this is where you get, um, people talk about wines going dumb, uh, and uh, the wines can be quite full and showy when they're young, and then suddenly, after a couple of years, they suddenly start going, 
they get a bit suspicious of you. Um, and I tasted quite a few 2010s earlier in the year. Uh, and whenever there was a 2009 next to them uh, for a comparison, it was like the 2010, supposedly the, the more stern vintage. That was the one that was all going, hello, hello, and the 2009s had just gone a little bit sulky. And uh, uh, yeah, what, what, what's that you're saying? Uh, and I get a little bit of that feeling here. Uh, what I will say about it is that here it feels like the fruit has got um, more... Uh, purity and freshness and um, so whereas the, the mouli have that, I was talking about that slight, ever so slight rustic element, here it feels uh, a little bit more uh, polished and refined uh, but um, it's, uh, yeah, as I say, it's not, it's, it's a bit dumb at the moment. And that's quite a classy wine actually. Um, What's good about it? It's got the uh, maybe uh, maybe the mouli. Apart from it, 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 it having uh, that what I call that slight like mouli rusticity here. It just feels like uh, as if it's been polished, but not polished so much. So there's um, so there's still a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of bite about it, but there's freshness of the fruit. It uh, doesn't feel like it's got quite as uh, as ripe as the previous two had got. And uh, so, uh, but there's a, a juicy completeness. It feels like almost like the Merlot is encouraging the Cabernet to let its hair down um, without losing its uh, its black currant freshness. Uh, and so there is there is a fresher element here uh, compared with the previous two. Is it the vintage? Uh, is it just the stage the vintage is at? Is it the uh, vigneron? Hey. Who are we to fight to, to say what it is at the moment? But all I'd say is all three of them today look pretty good. Probably my the, the Dayan de Belgrave favourite at the moment, but uh, I'll be watching them over the next few hours and uh, maybe in accompaniment with something um, steak-like. See you soon.